Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. This satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual matters. And we conduct our Path of Knowledge program in the satsang. So those who are in the program, they can ask their questions here, clear their doubts. And we do the tests, exams. I try to provide some guidance to the newcomers. Those who are interested in the Path of Knowledge, we try to provide some services to them. So, all the questions are most welcome. Raja is asking, may I ask two questions? Yes, you can ask. Uh, Guruji, uh, uh, thank you very much for sharing this wonderful video of this chat between uh, Spira and Dr. Tony. Uh, one aspect of Dr. Uh, uh, Spira's uh, uh, views was about illusion and ignorance. He was actually amplifying about illusion is one which is veiling the truth. Ignorance is not having the knowledge about it. But he was emphasizing that though the knowledge about the illusion is removed, still illusion, uh, uh, sorry, knowledge about the ignorance is removed, still illusion remains. Uh, may I seek your uh, uh, clarifications on this place? Yes, that is correct. There are before and after situations here, when there is no knowledge, the illusion is taken as the truth and it continues with this assumption in the mind of the seeker that it is the truth. After the knowledge, the illusion is seen as illusion, it is taken as false, but it still continues as the illusion. Simply knowing that it is, a, it is the truth will not stop it. So all that happened was the ignorance was removed, but the existence remains as it is. So I'll give you another example here, a metaphor. Let us say you are watching a movie for the first time and you don't know that it is a movie, it is a drama or it is simply pictures on the screen. So you continue to watch that movie as if something real is happening in the movie. When the actors cry, you cry. When they laugh, you laugh. When they are angry, you are angry. This happens to everybody in childhood. And somebody tells you, look, this is simply picture on the screen. At that time, you will stop looking at the movie as if it is true and you will see the reality of it which is it is simply an illusion but the movie will not stop the movie will continue to play as nicely as it was playing so those who assume that knowing the illusion will simply make it disappear they are still ignorant they don't know actual situation what is the next question thank you guruji the second was about this uh, metaphor of uh, uh, group expire was uh, uh, referring to that he was asking Dr. Tony that do you see my face and do you see it is moving? He was also asking that is the face moving or the screen moving? Could you please uh, uh, explain that? I wasn't able to comprehend that. Right now, probably I don't remember when he said that, but it is very easy. The truth is that the other person is watching simply a screen. The other person is watching uh, a picture on the screen. But what is he assuming? There is a person behind the screen. There is a real Rupert somewhere sitting somewhere. In the same way, when you see somebody, when you see your relatives, your house, and uh, your office and so on, you imagine, you simply assume that they are real. But what you are seeing is simply your own mind. Probably that is the metaphor. I'll give you another example. Let us say you are dreaming. In the dream you see many people. You also see yourself, a small version of yourself. You see all the buildings, all the cities and probably your relatives and everybody is there. But after waking up, you realize that nobody was there. It was an illusion. But what were you looking at? When you were looking at the dream, you were looking at yourself, your own mind. That's what. So probably the metaphor was about this, that 
I am the illusion and I am looking at myself. I am looking at my own illusory forms that simply appear out of the infinite potential. They are little bit uh, lawful, ordered. There is order in that appearance and therefore we are fooled into thinking that whatever is appearing is real. So most probably he was trying to show this metaphor according to my understanding. Thank you Guruji, thank you so much. Welcome. The Advait point of view is simply this, that uh, there is only you, which is visually called the existence. And the existence has the capacity to observe itself. But since it has no qualities, it can only observe that which is potential, not real. And because it is potential, it is false, it is not there. And so whatever is observed is an illusion because it is simply emptiness. There cannot be anything real to observe in it. So it simply dreams within itself. And that is also not very accurate to say. We say we don't know what is happening and uh, there is simply emptiness which is me and there is simply a dream which is also me. And all that which is imposed on this experience and the experiencer is simply ignorance. That this thing is doing that and this part of the dream will be real, that part will be unreal and things like that. And we are so much involved in the dream that we assume that our lives are also real and we conduct our lives as if they are real and nobody is disturbed by these things, that it is false. So it is all perfectly set up. There is nothing wrong in that. It will never go away because timeless, I am timeless. The existence is timeless. No matter how much knowledge you get, it will never go away. Because what is knowledge? Absence of wrong ideas. That's all it is. Absence. By knowledge, we do not mean that you come to know something new. No, that will never happen. You drop that was old and incorrect. That will happen. Yes. So ultimately, knowledge is simply purification of the mind. Purification of the intellect. Let us take... Another question by Paramjit. My goal is oneness. How to stay with or as oneness 24 by 7? And I understand I am the oneness. Yes, then there is no need to stay as oneness because you are already the one. Now you all you can do is whenever you start thinking as if you are a person, you can ignore those thoughts. That's all can be done. Whenever the thoughts try to convince you that I am separate, I am person, I am a human being. That can be dropped. And the, whatever remains is oneness already. And if we cannot drop it, it is still oneness. There is no point in struggling to be oneness. This tendency to struggle is the problem. The problem is not that you are not one. That is not the problem. It is impossible to be two, three, four or whatever. Or to be separate from the rest. It is impossible. What is the problem? You want to do that by some method or some tricks. And that's the problem. You be naturally that which you are and these thoughts that I am something else, they are unnatural. They are the product of ignorance. So you leave those thoughts as soon as they arise. Even if you cannot, sometimes they arise, sometimes we need to act in the world and we don't remember that I am the one. And at that time, there is no need to struggle and there is no need to blame this body-mind that it forgot to be one. Even if there is forgetting, the oneness is still there. So the whole problem is struggling to be one instead of simply accepting the oneness. So we don't need any practice. We need only surrender. No practices are needed. You need to convince yourself about the knowledge, verify the truth of it and then be naturally in this knowledge. Whenever this made up falls, pretension of being the human or being a form, being the body, mind. When these thoughts start clouding you, you can slowly, gradually, smoothly come back to knowledge, which means nothing. Be nothing. Be silent. Be in the bliss. That is all you can do. Siddhant is asking, what do you think about law of conservation of energy? It says that you cannot uh, create the energy. You cannot even destroy it. Or more precisely, it says that in a closed system, 
the total energy will remain constant it can be distributed here and there can be changed form can can change forms heat can become electricity electricity can become heat but the sum total of this number will remain the same now how to interpret it from our perspective what is energy it is simply change the amount of change measure of change now can you create change no it is already there can you destroy change no whenever you do something to destroy something all you are creating is change when you are trying to create something from nothing you are actually changing it so which means there, there must be some change before you try to make the change appear only change can make another change appear and only a change can make one change disappear you see how logical it is so the change is already there it can be converted into various forms the same change which we call vibration appears in many many forms from heat light electricity thoughts objects everything is simply vibration which means change and no it cannot be created will not be destroyed so it is perfectly in agreement with uh, our model and obviously the scientific model is perfectly correct the only problem is that uh, the materialistic model assumes that in the beginning a big ball of energy was created it appeared out of nothing there is the problem they don't know <laughs> that you know the conservation law cannot break in the beginning of the universe otherwise it's not a law so that that has happened because they think everything in terms of time what kind of time linear time that it must have started somewhere but no the existence has no start and it has no end time is an illusion that is that simply appears in this existence so we are still teaching this caveman kind of science to our children in the school which is simply a disaster when we have much better models now so yes energy if you translate it into change or vibration will produce the same laws yes now there are some people who will think that look the laws do not change so th that is true if the laws do not change that means according to our definition they are true so when they we discuss this thing in detail probably there is some satsang some podcast episode somewhere that uh, the laws apply to the mathematics the laws simply describe the illusion using mathematics and they describe only that which is not random which is ordered and they describe only that part of the illusion which we are capable of experiencing it will happen that the laws especially the laws of the mind laws of the memory they cannot be broken but that still does not make our experience real for example there are laws in a video game there are laws in a movie and uh, there are laws in the dream also very less but they are there but that does not make the video game and the movie in the dream real so presence of the laws does not guarantee reality why are they not changing then because the constitution of the mind is like this that it is made like this and it is operating under these laws and so the laws appear to the mind as unchanging but it is it is equally possible to have an experience or a world where there is totally different set of laws it is possible existence is infinite potential and it is possible to have many worlds where there will be different set of laws yes those laws will remain the same in that world but as soon as you move to another world you will find totally different laws but you will still find laws because the order is the law and the law is the order without the order there is no meaningful experience and this order is called the law by order i mean the opposite of disorder opposite of randomness so if every world has its own laws are the laws true so in a small area of the memory universal memory you will find a set of laws that never change that never seem to change but as soon as you switch to another uh, area in the memory you will find another set of laws and actually you don't need to go that far when you take the small part of the universe you will find different set of laws are applicable when you take a large part of the universe you will find a different set of laws are applicable 
Ultimately, you will find there are no laws because you will see that the conservation of energy is applicable only in a closed system. But the universe is not a closed system. That is the problem in this law. It is simply assumed that the universe is all there is. That is the materialistic point of view. It is not a closed system. And unfortunately, we don't have any way to find out these things right now. We don't have any experiments to verify that the universe is not a closed system. So next question is by Vipin, everything is projected, which is the Brahman, but how to feel love with everything? There is no need. The definition of love is that everything is one. It does not mean a feeling or emotion. There is no need to feel it. There is no need to have any kind of emotions about it. As soon as you know everything is one, your actions will be loving by default. Automatically your actions will become loving because somehow you cannot harm your own parts. You cannot harm yourself. So again there will be a purification of the intellect here. And no appearing of strange emotions or feelings. No. In the path of knowledge that does not happen. Simply disappearing of stupidity happens. Which is hating everybody, unnecessary violence, unnecessary selfishness. You see a little bit of hate is needed. A little bit of violence is needed for protection, self-protection. And a little bit of selfishness is needed otherwise this creature will not survive. But when I say unnecessary, that means doing that in ignorance which is more than needed, unneeded action, that will stop. There is no need to like shower in the love all the time. That is unrealistic expectation. Just be in the awareness. That is much better than being in some kind of feeling which comes and goes. False feeling. Be in the truth. That is the teaching. So those who are expecting that, you know, some kind of positive change will happen simply because I am the Brahman. No, because you were the Brahman before also. The only positive thing that happens is ignorance is gone. Now whatever is happening is perfectly okay. It was perfect before. It is perfect now. So everything is one does not mean that we love everything. It is impossible. It means we accept everything as it is. Acceptance. Not some kind of feeling. Yai is asking, what can we do when the knowledge is understood intellectually and logically, but the body doesn't believe it? I had some success being in the witness and I know and know myself as just consciousness for extended period of time. The fourth part of POK program was enough to make me live this truth in the presence of experience. All of my body and emotions were absorbed in this knowing. It was a realization for deep within inside out. After that, so the body has no intelligence of this kind. The body only knows how to survive, how to grow, how to reproduce and that is perfect. It should be like this. You are trying to impose the intelligence of the higher layers in the lower layers. That is the problem. This is not the problem that the body does not believe it or the body does not react in some special way to what you know. That is not the problem. The problem is the expectation that somehow the knowledge will do some kind of miracle and the body will start doing something else. It will still become hungry, it will still become tired, it will still become old and it will die. So my suggestion is to be in the knowledge in whatever way you can. Emotions they need to play, thoughts they need to come. The unwanted will be gone. Like I said, if you are in awareness, the unwanted will be gone. And when you are saying knowledge is understood intellectually, no. The word intellectual means that somebody told you something and you don't have any experience behind it. That is the meaning of the word intellectual. But whatever knowledge we get on the path of knowledge is experiential. So that is the problem. The thought is still there that nothing is appearing in the world because I know something. See, it is already like this. Whatever is shown is the current experience only. Nothing unusual is shown. The knowledge is from your current experience. So there will be a tendency in the mind to think that nothing unusual happened so it cannot be true, it can be only intellectual. But actually in the three day program or in, in the path of knowledge program also, all that is shown to you in front of your eyes is your own experience. And this experience is evaluated through the intelligence. What kind of intelligence that is 
purified of notions, assumptions, imaginations, indoctrination. We leave that out and we see things as they are. So nothing intellectual is given on the path of knowledge. Actually, the intellectual knowledge is simply collection of facts, data, which is given in your school and colleges. No experience behind that knowledge. Your, your first, first president was this, your third president was this, and this king killed so many people, <laughs> and they call it knowledge. It is simply facts which are stored in your mind. And people are very quick to believe that that is the true knowledge. But if I am showing that that which is in front of their eyes, they call it merely intellectual. So what can be the reason of it? There is some impurity, that means. The old thinking is still there, that something needs to happen, something unusual needs to happen in order for my experience to become real knowledge. No, if it is true, it is true now. It was true before and it will remain true after this. Nothing unusual needs to happen. Nothing needs to happen to the body, to the mind, to the world. And he is saying now, in the state of truth, all the body believe the knowledge. No, body has no belief. Mind has beliefs. Beliefs are wrong thoughts. So probably a little bit of ignorance is still there that the body can believe something or the body reacts to the knowledge. Probably because of the knowledge, there was a silencing of the body-mind, which is natural. It comes in a state of bliss because a lot of load was thrown away, a lot of burden was dropped. So for a few days, it can, it may seem like a different kind of experience. For example, when you carry a big weight on your shoulders, when you put it down, you feel relaxed. Same way, there can be a psychological effect of clearing of the impurities. But that does not mean that the knowledge is intellectual and it needs to happen all the time. That side effect need not happen all the time. The way the body and the mind is right now is perfect. If anything unusual happens in it, that is the problem. That means there was some impurity, there was some change, there was some clearing somewhere, something broke in the mind because it was, you know, long ago it was stored and solidified. So that can cause a little bit of side effects. But expecting that these side effects will last for the life and that only signifies knowledge. That is the sign of knowledge. That is ignorance. That cannot be called intelligent conclusion. Leila is asking, is love acceptance? Yes, you can say like this, that I am one. There is only one and that one is I am. And in spite of all the differences, all the variety and all the, con all the you can say, confusion going on in the world, it is me. So it's, it's fine actually. When we accept like this, that can be called love. It, it is actually called unconditional love. In spirituality, we do not use the word love so much. We use uh, surrender, unconditional surrender, unconditional love. Because we are not asking the world or the people to change in any way. We are accepting everything as it is, seeing that it is me only appearing in various forms. Now, will that mean that we stop doing that which is necessary? No. <laughs> if you see cockroach in your kitchen, it is me. Yes. But you need to kill it. Unconditional, you see. You see your enemy who has attacked your country and he is hungry and sick. You need to save his life. Unconditional. Do that which is needed. This is the real love. And what is the distorted form of love? Asking everybody to behave as you please. You want something and that must happen all the time. That is called madness, not love. There is some mental issues with that person. Do this because I love you. <laughs> you must have seen this. Or if you don't do this, I will not love you. This is called conditional reflex. The creature is simply trying to survive by saying these words, I love you. Either he's try he or she is trying to get something from the others or they are trying to protect themselves or obviously they are trying to reproduce. Little bit of security, little bit of pleasure and that is called love in the human world. But in the spiritual world, simply accepting everybody as they are and doing that which is necessary. You see, just like the mother, if you are a mother, you will understand this, that you accept all your children as they are but sometimes you punish them to make them behave properly that is also love you are not going to punish somebody else's child to make him 
behave properly because no concern there somebody else's child so punishing violence is also a part of the love now it is very tricky for those who do do not have knowledge very tricky for those who have knowledge because what do what is your conditioning that after knowledge a seeker should become like a saint <laughs> should not become angry should always be loving if somebody slaps him he should you know show his other cheek slap me here also that is your brainwashing by the society yes there are people like this you know one in a million will be like this but uh, not practical you see <laughs> that kind of love is not practical so i am a big fan of krishna he killed left and right when it was ne- it was needed and he loved intensely when it was that was needed he did everything that a human is capable of doing so yes there can be other forms of me who are simply silent and praying and somebody runs a road roller on them and they do not see anything there is there is a possibility but uh, that is not really the path of knowledge here we are practical we know what is love we we have accepted it everything is my own part my own form and still we use intelligence to act we do not have disrespect for the saintly qualities but we know that they will arrive at the right time when you will leave this world not before before you need to survive a little bit minimal we do the minimal to continue in this world and this world is a dual world all good and bad will be here and we accept that also there will be mixture it cannot be all good because it is there is duality it is based on the vibration so vibration is both positive and negative vibration means it will go in one direction then it will go in another direction like a pendulum and that is also me i am the good and i am the evil i am the saint and i am the sinner everything is me and this kind of attitude is called unconditional love surrender acceptance so let go of your conditioning about what these words mean and check your experience you need not behave in a way which people have prescribed they don't know anything you need to behave from your knowledge what does your knowledge say i am one but the play is going on like this it is all false the multiplicity that you see is all false so if somebody is behaving nicely <laughs> it is false nobody is nice somebody is behaving badly false nobody is bad and this machine the body mind will react accordingly if it wants to love somebody like in a emotional physical way it will do that if it wants to protect defend it will do that that is also false that is also an illusion that is a part of the dream what can you do you can minimize this excess do not do it in excess that much can be done you see it cannot be stopped like he said you know the maya does not go away simply because you know it is maya all you can do is stop the stupidity which was happening before the knowledge you cannot stop the illusion but you can stop acting stupidly in the illusion in a irresponsible way that is possible for a human we cannot change the illusion it is not possible because there is no doer here it will change itself that is what we know so the good will not remain good and the bad will not remain bad knowing this fully you accept everything as passing impermanent that will bring peace in your mind and that is the real treasure is bliss peaceful internally being peaceful internally is the is your earning from the path of knowledge otherwise you'll never get anything like he was saying the body is not behaving as i want it no <laughs> are you behaving as you want it you are peace yourself you are bliss yourself is this being reflected in your mind in your actions then the knowledge has done its job so there is a line between uh, taking everything literally and applying it in the life and uh, thinking intelligently and improving things in the life which were imbalanced in you that's all we can do where do you want to draw the line it is your choice you can do it to the extreme and then you will get the fruits of it yes and you don't do anything at all you know you remain as solid as a rock even after the knowledge has happened and that is also not good so we do whatever is possible you see for this creature depending on the desires if you have a very intense desire to change something in the body and the mind yes go ahead and do it it's not going to make any difference you see 
your criteria should be is it producing suffering yes change it is it producing happiness or it is neutral don't do it don't do anything about it don't fix it if it is not broken this is the law it is perfect as it is the only thing the creature wants is freedom from suffering otherwise it is already free from all points of views and the suffering is caused by simply ignorance not because the situation is bad because the people are bad because the body is not as you please the suffering is because of ignorance you change this much you change that much which makes the makes the suffering disappear there is nothing more to do everything is beautiful everything is perfect suffering is the problem and that is the problem only for this creature not for the experiencer not for the existence it is completely in acceptance you see when i say my nature is love can't you see that i am completely in acceptance the experiencer never rejects any experience and it does not want any special kind of experience so it is already unconditionally loving that is by true nature so the only problem is the suffering that is created in the mind and that is because of not knowing my true nature otherwise the suffering is an illusion we don't even want the bad illusion we want only good illusion yes act wisely that's all you see wisely does not mean a specific kind of behavior it is not a commandment wisely means use your knowledge use your intelligence and depending on the circumstances do your best it is very simple jayesh has a question i have a little personal question i recently lost someone dear to me probably more than my parents there wasn't any attachment or any bondage or any obligation to look after them love is all there was now after this information and knowledge about life world people we know yes go on what is the question there is still some sort of suffering you don't want even that much suffering so look at the nature of this suffering you are saying after all this information and knowledge the information does nothing you need to have proper experience so if you do not have this conviction then i am bliss and there is no such thing as death and um, all that you learned all that you heard from teachers gurus from books if there is no conviction if you have not verified it yourself then there will be two parts in the mind one will say look this is the reality there is no death and i am peaceful i am blissful but the other part will say look there was a loss i am not getting that which i wanted i lost somebody whom whom i loved and that somebody was real and this one who wanted that person is real you see these two parts are there now is this a good condition no so there is suffering yes because the knowledge is not absorbed completely it is still at a level of listening only you heard it from somebody but probably you did not realize it the meaning of the word realize it to make it real realize how to do that with your own experience and with your own intellect now it will happen that sometimes you will forget the knowledge that is why we have the awareness practice so probably you are not doing that and even those who do the awareness practice they forget to do the practice and the old tendencies they start running in the mind and that is actually suffering so the root cause of this problem is that you are not on, on the path you are not on the proper path you are not walking systematically so probably you heard one or two things but that is all that has happened you see the hot pan comes in the picture again after touching the hot pan you will never repeat it you will never touch it because it is real the hot pan is real and uh, will you complain that no matter what i do i go and touch the hot pan again and again every day i touch the hot pan if somebody says don't touch it i go and touch it will you say like this never because the experience was real for you that you got burned by the hot pan was a real experience it is impressed in your memory and you always remember it in the same way who you are should become a truth for you otherwise this practice is of no use if you don't know who you are what are you trying to be aware of and if you're not doing any kind of systematic work if you're not walking on on any spiritual path if you don't have any teacher any guru then yes this 
whatever you heard will remain as information like he said intellectual knowledge yes you have never seen it and this kind of questions will be there that i know everything but still i keep doing the same things so what does it say either the first part should be wrong or the second part should be wrong if you know everything you should there should be automatic stopping of all the suffering or this all these actions and if the, the suffering is still there that means the knowledge is not there or you are forgetting it even if you realized it you are not making any effort to remember it or to put it into use in your everyday life jayesh is saying i am having hard time realizing i use this loss as trigger for awareness practice but before this i was quite content maybe this suffering will take me to knowledge see it looks like that you have devised your own practices in your mind which will do nothing those who think that by doing this i'll use this loss as trigger for awareness no it does not work like this all you need to do is follow the instructions walk on the path if you are interested in the path and if you cannot then take something else creating your own practices assuming that this will do this that will do that because i know everything is not intelligence so only guru can take you to knowledge the suffering takes you to the guru you see <laughs> there are millions and trillions of people who are suffering do they become knowledgeable do they realize their true nature no the suffering wakes them up a little bit probably that which i was doing is not good now let me find somebody let me find the answers so just like i said this path is not for you try something else that is my instruction also try something else purify your mind a little bit and then you can return to the path of knowledge there is no problem here you know some things work for some people some sometimes they do not work for everybody so do not waste your time do something which works which is suitable for you where you can learn something and if you cannot learn anything simply try to live a good life yeah he is saying can you mention what are some simple practices for awareness yes a full practice routine is given in the program can i simply tell people to do it and they will do it no you need to go through the whole program step by step that is necessary you need the knowledge you need the knowledge of what you are first then you need the knowledge of what you are not so that you do not confuse it with your with yourself and once all these things are revealed awareness is possible so that is our technique the technique is step by step disciplined and what is the expectation of an average seeker that some kind of miracle should happen and i'll become i'll come in awareness by chanting this mantra or by worshiping this deity or something like this you see or doing a mechanical robotic exercise of some kind that is not our path we go very very systematically and then a routine is given for both meditation awareness purification wherever there are impurities that that need need to be purified and then a little bit of awareness shows up in this lifetime this is how it is knowledge takes no time but this creature does not really want that there are lots of resistances obstacles impurities and then a little bit of awareness arrives so yes lifelong practice is needed and that is your choice if you want you can remain as you are naturally no practice is needed like the hot pan example automatically you will do the right thing automatically there will be awareness like there is a old story about the lion and the sheep so the lion was told only once that you are the lion he kept practicing all of his life to remain a lion no you see the superman needs to know only once that he is superman and he can do whatever he wants for the rest of his life he can use his super powers so why do we need practice then there there are some impurities you see normally we don't need that kind of strict practice it is simply remembrance bringing back the mind into knowledge again and again and again to undo that which it was doing before that that takes a little bit of practice but just like the lion you don't need to do that that much if the lion gets a thought in in one day that probably i am the sheep i need to eat grass and there is the practice you see don't think like this is the practice become aware oh these thoughts are coming they are just old programming old habit that much is the practice what can be more simple than that 
but yes we have made it a part of the program those who are interested in going through that program will see the benefits don't be the sheep this is the practice don't be the ordinary man be a superman now some people you know they're not convinced that the practices can be so simple yes they are so simple so for those people <laughs> who cannot believe that the practice is so simple the spiritual life is so simple it does not even take intelligence for them i can make a convoluted practice no no problem at all you get up in the morning stand on your head and you know, run for 5 kilometers and chant this mantra and then repeat i am not the body i am not the mind i can make it so complicated that finally they think it is doing something and that has happened for many many paths that are not based on knowledge all they have is practice and those who are practicing they don't know what they are practicing you can see that kind of drama happening in the land of surish spirituality people don't know what they are doing knowledge comes first then comes establishing in the knowledge which is very very simple so i have given you three um, three alternatives you can simply be what you are as much as you can you join the program and do that kind of routine practice or i can give you something so complicated that it will become another struggle for you yes the end of spiritual path is a noble knowing the ultimate truth yes you don't need practice really that which is practicing is an illusion will become dirt so what is the real practice on the path of knowledge live a simple joyful fulfilling pure life that is the practice <laughs> these words the mindfulness the awareness and this and that samadhi they are invented for people who cannot live a simple life who are not peaceful enough they are given this kind of placebo medicine they have too much energy probably cannot live a simple life cannot be silenced and we cannot force the silence also the silence is the final achievement of a seeker not awareness so <laughs> we give them something we keep them engaged and we say yes you are doing good you are walking on the path now but uh, what the guru is doing is guru is simply waiting for that person to stop it's like the petrol in the car when it exhausted the car stops finally so these practices are simply given to burn the petrol which is which we call the prarabdha we keep them engaged yes do this do that you will be happy <laughs> you will be immortal you will become a god like this you know we lie we lie to these people that this will happen that will happen that which you are has already happened and what will happen is pure illusion it is all false but yes the mind likes the false more than the true its truth is boring so why not so like he said the illusion will continue now what what to do this tendencies are turned into that kind of direction they are given a direction where you can keep doing whatever you want you know whatever practices you want and still remain on the path and i have seen that the awareness practice is the best because you are pra- the mind thinks i am practicing something it is going to do something very very nice to this creature and on the other hand there is always a remembering of who you are you see two birds one stone so that is why we have also adapted adopted this practice of awareness because people always demand practice even if they know that it is not needed you know many people ha- are telling them that this is not needed only knowledge is enough just verify it thoroughly convince yourself remove your doubts completely and nothing will be needed they know all these things but still probably i'll forget this thing probably i'll forget who i am i am probably my guru will stop talking to me if i don't do anything spiritual <laughs> what is spiritual you need to learn these things because there is a little bit conditioning there there is still some conditioning which is manifesting so i can see this and then it is given some some dose is given some kind of proper instrument is given which simply fixes this and normally we cannot fix these things so we simply let it run till it stops so you can stop now if you want like uh, papa ji used to say you know you if you watch the videos of papa ji he says you know who you are yes 
then the person starts talking you know but look this is happening that and papa ji used to say keep quiet now keep quiet you know who you are now keep quiet no 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 i need to go here in this temple in that pilgrimage in this ashram this baba ji and he used to say keep quiet that was his practice he never even said be aware like i keep saying be in awareness use the knowledge he did not even say that he he said stop talking now stop doing so when i heard him i thought what kind of stupid practice is that don't do anything keep quiet what kind of boring life is that <laughs> and now we understand that he was not saying that you don't do anything you become inactive inert person he was saying stop seeking stop getting entangled in the illusion again and again are you convinced yes now keep quiet why are these people talking so much you know they have video channels i mean the youtube channels they have videos they write books and all is that really keeping quiet no <laughs> then why is there an action can somebody tell me nitya is saying to keep the mind constructively engaged yes good answer it just happens they don't do it once there is full knowledge the existence wants existence to know it is just existence yes that is also possible it is human tendency to tell everybody that i know something and it can be a practice also the guru says go and teach right because probably the guru knows the, this person will never sit quietly so like i said some direction is given to the mind and so they think not to fall back in the trap of illusion yes this is some kind of practice so will you come to know if all the gurus simply sit silently won't tell anything to anyone won't even write will you come to know the silence which you are when i say action is there because there is a desire that is what i was saying there is a lot of energy isn't it from the oneness and love also yes it is a form of love also in it is saying i believe it is possible in some cases and rajit is saying because it's necessary <laughs> yes it is necessary you see you came to know that i am the silence because somebody spoke to you he was not silent he told you this thing he wrote the book he made the video so it is a kind of sacrifice in my opinion that the guru breaks his silence so that the student can become silent yes to help others to serve this is called the compassion love like he said kindness so this is something more than simply exhausting your burning up your energies desires is something more than giving a direction to the mind and this is real thing now and that is why nothing is asked in return it's only given and the guru is saying that yes i can live my life peacefully others are just illusions although they are my forms but ultimately there is no knowledge and they just don't know this so that is not a big deal in this universe there will be billions and billions who will always remain ignorant so why should i do it <laughs> the guru can say like this but uh, what is the tendency there which is called the bodhisattva tendency that if if i can remove ignorance from one person my life will be fulfilled this is the tendency so when there is a fire in the grassland you must have seen this big hills where there is nothing but dry grass and sometimes they catch fire what do we do to stop spreading of the fire we burn a little bit of grass around the hill that's all we do so the burned grass does not catch fire and the fire stops this is a very good technique so the fire stops the fire and it's in the same way the speech on the action stops the action makes you silent now everybody is not told to teach because we do not observe this kind of tendency in them very few people have this kind of tendency the rest they want to be silent peaceful but many they want to practice so yes why not practice our goal is to become free from practices not to do them and the practice is always like this especially on the path of knowledge which frees you from the practice it will be always like this and the awareness practice is same ultimately it becomes your second nature which means you become habitual of it and there is no need to do it unlike other practices siddhant is saying can you say that the whole universe is one single organism you can say that 
as a metaphor what is an organism you know there is birth there is growth there is some activity it does something then there is death and look at the universe you don't need to look at the whole of the universal memory just simply look at the physical universe it appears it grows evolves it does something <laughs> who knows what then it disappears so as above so below same thing is happening at all the levels probably we don't know about the two you know beginning and the end of it but we can guess we can uh, use the logic because it is changing that alone is a confirmation that it will disappear and because it it will disappear that alone is the confirmation that it appeared how and why is not important so that which is the tiniest is doing exactly that which is the biggest same thing and we know what is that called? what is that same one word for this thing that is called survival so metaphorically everything is doing the same thing they are dancing the same dance small memory is doing that the big memory is doing that and the universal memory is doing that no difference but what happens is <laughs> if you start calling the universe as organism then the ignorance in the people will say that look they call the universe as organism now the universe can be good it can be bad it will think like this it will do like this why did the universe create create all these relatives and you know why did the universe create this kind of job or this kind of country and now you know what happens this is madness so we'll never say like this and that the whole thing is an organism because those who don't know the meaning of the word organism they will try to use their limited understanding to know what it is and that will be very very wrong picture they will try to impose the qualities of an organism on the universe and the organism is whatever they see around them people or creatures or whatever a para human some kind of big human in the sky so that is why this is a dangerous word the word organism means something which is organized we don't know you know how whether the root is the organ organization or the whether the root is the organism or the organ but yes the whole universe is organized no problem call it organism yahi is saying is information about the background of a student and his past experience is helpful for spreading the knowledge sometimes it is necessary but uh, most of the time all you need to do is whether that uh, student has accepted the path and whether the student is ready to listen to the teacher that's all we need to know and we can proceed if he has done so many practices in the past so many paths and all we don't really need to know because the path of knowledge will wipe out all that totally unnecessary if that fellow was on the path of knowledge and did not uh, succeed then we can still try once more you see once more we can do something try to find out what happened but usually the background is not so important like look at the guru he is eager to remove the ignorance now there cannot be any excuse that this fellow has no background or this person has some kind of different background he is not suitable we cannot say like this we simply try we do our best look this is the experience this is the experiencer this is the illusion this is the existence and we provide all kinds of evidences we show all the experiences we can show and we hope that that person will adopt the path that will be fruitful so you must have seen this in the 3d the 3d program we simply start talking we do not ask for the prior job experience and which guru you visited in the past very rarely you see sometimes it happens that the person is not getting even one sentence of what i'm saying and then we need to you know curiosity is there why what happened here <laughs> why is there such a big disaster here sometimes then we want to know why are you like this you cannot understand i am not a chair i am not a table what is wrong with you so then we ask what did you do or sometimes he is asking some other questions you know how to turn the stone into gold no you are the experiencer focus on this try to know what you are no 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 how to contact the ghost my father who died and then we need to ask some questions you see do you still want to know or do you still want to see your father something like this you know we check the background 
usually we don't need to check it 90% of the time those who contact me or the other teachers here they have a clear will to know otherwise they don't contact it's highly boring for these people it does not really matter matter what the student has done in the past if he is ready to receive the knowledge and we are not trying to change the past we are not trying to fulfill their expectations what are we trying to do we are trying to seed the knowledge it look this is called knowledge this is how it looks this is what we do in the path of knowledge that will be a seed thing so we simply assume that uh, this person is raw blank slate and we try to seed this knowledge we try to make an impression in this memory which is blank and this also helps the teacher to concentrate more on the knowledge and less on the, on the path that the person was on you do not assume things like somebody can say i have read all the scriptures now tell me the last thing <laughs> there, are, there are people like this so we always start from the beginning we do not even ask how many scriptures you read because then the teacher can become biased that probably he knows everything about the maya so i'll simply give him the knowledge of the oneness it is possible like this we can take shortcuts sometimes when we come to know that the person already knows but we don't really know simply because the student has said that i know and does not guarantee it and we do not have enough time to take a test there to conduct an exam there so we continue the scripted program it is scripted all this is done for some good reason you see this is not a shortcoming of the program the script runs like this without asking anything any background or anything and we do not give them any expectations also like nowhere in the program we mentioned that you will become this or you will become that <laughs> nothing like this no promise so in short the desire is the criteria and how much they want the knowledge is the criteria not what they have done so far so it looks like there are no more questions today and we have reached the end of the meeting thanks everybody for attending today's satsang see you next time